Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Liz and this is Let's Get Lizical where we do everything card making. And today for the new year, I thought we would start off with remaking an old card. I did this for a blog a while ago and I thought it was actually really fun to revisit maybe cards you did at the beginning of your card making journey or if even like a year ago, uh, your skills will improve over time and just like the techniques you learn and stuff like that so I think it's good to just try that card again especially if it's a card that you maybe like weren't 100% happy with um, so I'm gonna put a photo up in the top left corner and it's just so you know what I'm trying to emulate and this is a card I did from my mom a few years ago and um, I was never really 100% happy with it I know she loved it she loves all the cards I make her but this was one that I didn't love um, and I just couldn't like put my finger on why and I think I did once I looked at the photo and just like, it came up with this new concept for this card. So what I did was I cut my oval birch background three times in three different grays and then I ink blended the background using both Distress and Distress Oxide inks just because I don't have a darker blue for the Distress Oxides. Um, so I used Blueprint Sketch Distress ink and then I use Wilted Violet Distress Oxide ink and then I splattered it with a little bit of water to give that um, twilight texture. There's the picture up in the top left corner there and I'm just kind of like trying to pick out decent browns. I don't have like a good, lot of good brown markers. That's maybe something I might need to look into for this year. Um, but and I also don't have the same owl stamp set that I had from the previous card. I think I ended up either giving it away or selling it or something because I wasn't using it as often. It was a doodlebug set with a bunch of different woodland creatures. The one I'm using now is an MFT set and it's the only one that I had where there was like a smaller owl image. I do have slightly larger ones with Sunny Studios. Anyway, so I am just coloring the owl. This one has a sweater on so I thought I would use greens. I think I try to make it slightly more teal a little bit later but for now I'm leaving it as is for the card and I'm just gonna end up fussy cutting this by hand. I absolutely hate fussy cutting but I really didn't want to set up my machine for this either and it was fairly simple. I did end up cutting his feet off just because I'm not gonna cut around those tiny little um, stick legs and and then I'll end up um, putting the black marker around the edges to, just to make it look nice. I didn't want to leave a white border on this one. I didn't leave it on the last one either just because I didn't want that stark white contrast. Um, so this time I did cut it to the line and then colored it so it looks a little bit more finished, um, which is exactly what I did last time as well. and then I'm just trying to figure out placement for it here and now I'm kind of like marking off which trees I want to cut off out of each layer. Um, the original card was just I did an all black tree it was like one of the first cut files I ever made. Um, this one's fairly new this one came out last month or the month before I think um, and I featured it in my uh, holiday card series for this year but I wanted to use it again for this just because I thought it gave it a little bit more openness in the background um, and it's just a lot simpler than the one I used previously. So I was able to use like a different colored gray for each layer uh, for each tree. So there's three trees so I made them three different grays. And looking at this again I probably would have used the mid-tone gray twice maybe. Uh, I do end up darkening this cardstock a little bit later as well because the lightest gray was just like too light. It was too much of a contrast. Uh, so I just get my, I think, C5 marker, cool, like my cool gray Copics, and I just colored the tree and like a little bit around the edge of the oval just so that if it doesn't line up 100% when I put it together, it looks like decent and then you're not going to see like light grays here and there. Um, and then I'm just going to test it out, see what I'm going to do. Uh, I think I was debating on adding this back layer as 
like propped up a little bit as well, but I end up gluing this one straight down. And then the middle gray and the black, I end up propping on a couple layers of cardstock. Uh, I used the cardstock strips I had left over in a mug. This is a technique I learned from Jess Crafts. She uses her own, like, what she calls fake foam tape, and it's just like scraps of your cardstock. I, I just end up cutting a bunch of it into like half inch strips and I glue them together and throw them in this mug for later use. Um, after I was done filming this video, I actually cut up a ton of single strips and I'll glue them together when I'm ready, but um, just something I was getting rid of some strips out of my stash. So I decided to do that and then I'll glue them together at a later date when I have some time or when I'm bored. I like to do things with paper when I'm bored. Um, or if I just want to craft but I don't know what to do. Um, I did a video on this last year where I was like, okay, you don't know what to do with your crafting, so let's just work with paper. So I make envelopes, I'll do these strips, I will do backgrounds. You know, there's a bunch of things you can do when you feel like you want to be crafty but you don't know what to work on specifically. Just work on a bunch of random things that you'll either need eventually, like backgrounds, envelopes, or these strips if you want to prop them up without using too much foam tape. Because um, the foam tape I have is the Michaels, like a really large roll. They have somewhat similar to like Big Mama foam tape, but it's thicker. Um, so I don't use it as often. I use it more so for like shaker cards and stuff. So um, yeah, I just like to work on some random stuff. Sometimes I'll just cut panels too. Uh, it's just if I... I want to be crafty. I just cut paper. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, it's soothing for me. It's very calming. It's very like something you don't really need to focus on unless you're going, I guess, for specific um, measurements, then you do need to pay a little bit more attention. But um, once you get in the groove of making things, it just, it's, it's easier and then becomes just mindless kind of thing. So it just gives you something to do. So I do that for the couple of layers on this card and it takes a bit of time. Uh, if you have the Big Mama foam tape, you could use that. I'm out and I just thought I would get rid of some strips. So that's what I'm using up here. If you wanted to, you could cut black uh, leftover strips. These were just in my jar, like I said. So um, I'm just using up this. You're not going to see it on the card anyway because it adds very little dimension, but it still, does still add that dimension, um, which is good. And it's all cardstock. Like this card is 100% cardstock, so it's 100% recyclable. Um, you don't have to worry about the foam tape because foam tape's not recyclable. Uh, if you wanted to, you should technically take the card apart. Um, but I know uh, most of the people I give cards to, they save them forever anyway. Thank you guys. But yeah, so now I'm just uh, assembling the card and just doing it kind of like layer by layer. And then again, with this one, I like that there's like dimension in the different, like the monochrome grays um, into the black instead of it all just being black. I could also have done this all black, like cut all three layers in black or even just, you know, cut out those trees and then prop them up on different layers potentially. But I just thought that this was a different way of doing it. And I did leave that colored border. Normally I would have just like cut that off, but I did the same thing with my video in my holiday card series. And I really liked the effect it had where you could kind of still see the background around the edges. I just, I just think it looks really nice that way. And again, like I didn't want any stark white on this card because it is meant to be a darker card. Uh, I even in the end end up coloring the sentiment. Like this is some sentiment strips from Simon Says Stamp. Uh, I'll link them down below. I don't remember exactly what it's called. I think it's like the Let's Celebrate Reverse or something like that. Um, but I just have the sentiment here. I think it says just for you. Yeah, so um, not during the video, but after the video, I end up going over with an alcohol marker in a green to kind of like match the sweater just to tone it down because it was so like stark and white. There's nothing stark white on this card. But it's, that's what's the great thing about these toner strips. Like you can add your alcohol markers over them and it, you don't see it over the black. You could just kind of like scribble over the whole sentiment strip, which is what I did. 
Um, you might notice it in the photos. Uh, so I think that's it for today, guys. Thanks again for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Uh, I have a lot of content already planned for this year, so I'm super excited to get started on that. And I will see you guys again next time. Thanks. Bye.